Simone became the first female gymnast ever to win three world championships in a row. She also became the most decorated American gymnast. She won the most golds ever won by any female gymnast in the history of the world championships. It was a whole new world for her because she realized that she was as good as anybody else in the country. I, I think a lot of people had talked to her about it, but she doesn't put that type of pressure on herself. She just likes to go out, enjoy gymnastics, have fun, compete, see where it's at. Um, since going senior in that first P&Gs, she's pretty much won every meet she's stepped into since then. But at that time, she didn't really know if she belonged in the senior ranks. I think it changes when you have to do something out of it. Arms. Take your time. <laughs> uh, got a little too far past the bar. What I notice about Simone first starting working with her is the personality that you see on TV is the same personality that you get in the gym. You know, she's very bubbly, she's very talkative, she talks to her teammates, she has fun, she roots them on. So as a leader in that fashion, um, it's wonderful to have her in the gym. Her personality works really well for her because she has a tendency to turn on a switch when she has to. So. What you see is maybe 10% of what happens in the day, and 90% of the time, she's fun, she's bubbly, she's, she's just being a normal kid. Down one, right there, here we go. Ladies, holler when you need a spot. Now that I've achieved all of it, it just feels, I don't know, I feel really blessed to have the opportunities. If I were to think back whenever I was younger that I would have all these titles and all these world medals, I never would have thought that it would happen. Simone and her three siblings came into our lives. Um, this was when Simone was three years old. We received a call from the social worker telling us that they had placed the children in foster care. Simone's biological mother uh, was not able to take care of them because of problems with substance abuse. So we made a decision to bring them on board. Um, I had two, two boys and they were in high school at that time. And to go from a family of four to a family of eight overnight is really not easy. I only remember a couple things um, whenever I was younger, just being in foster care. And so I remember that a little bit and going to school there. I remember whenever we moved to Texas, just that I had a new family and like new brothers, but I was still so young, so it's kind of all I ever knew. A lot of it is still like a blur because I was just so young, and so like Texas is all I know pretty much. It was difficult to make the tra it was not easy to make the transition. I remember um, praying about the situation quite often. I remember having my own barriers, and the Two girls had their own barriers. I remember Simone being a little mother to her younger sister. I had to get her to understand that I would pick up that role and that didn't have to be her role. So we went through quite a few battles, but knowing that these children needed our help, as time went on, it got easier. And so we knew that this was going to be a different life, and it's the best thing that ever happened to us. Come on. Under. Good. 
I do. I felt like you're finally getting open more, like we did before. See if you can stay down just a fraction longer. Simone was flipping around because she was very, a very hyperactive child. So I was constantly saying to stop jumping on the furniture. She flipped, I mean, flip over, flip backwards, flip behind, behind the, uh, the furniture. She would also get on the mailbox. I would be yelling because she would do flips from the, from the top of the mailbox. This was what I was dealing with. My brothers used to work at a daycare called Kids Are Kids, and we always had these field trips, but this one was to the gym, and so you had to like sign a waiver and all that stuff. It, it, it never occurred to me to put someone in gymnastics, and so when, when, when she came home that day, she brought a slip of paper. It was the best thing that ever happened to me. <laughs> my parents signed in and was like, okay, let's just go with your brothers and see what happens. In, in my opinion, that was gonna save my furniture. I remember the day a little bit. Um, I remember we always lined up at like the upstairs door before and we got instructions of what we could and couldn't do. And I just remember watching them like on beam and on floor and I'm like, I think I can do that. So I would try to copy them. I just loved it so much and I love learning all the new skills and doing all the different events. After a couple of classes in the front, which is like the rec classes, I remember being taken to the back and like, okay, you're gonna start team now. And like all my friends in the front were like, huh? And I was like, oh, okay. So I just went to the back pretty much automatically. When Simone started gymnastics, she moved, she moved in the levels very quickly. She was a beginner. And then she, I mean, that lasted a couple, maybe a week or two. And then she started moving up the, up the levels. Here is Simone Biles, clearly taller than the beam. National floor champion. Tell me about that floor routine. I did do a whip and set up at camping because I missed my hands on my full end, but it turned out pretty good. And so what are you going to do to celebrate your national championship? Probably go home and have a party. A party? Who are you going to invite? I don't know yet. <laughs> at that time, she was transitioning into high school. And when we talked about that, um, that's when we decided, well, okay, the only way you could spend more time doing, doing gymnastics is if, if we have a home, you know, if you're homeschool and you're not, you will not be able to go to the regular high school. And she wouldn't hear it. I would cry and I would like scream at them and I'm like, no, yes I can go to high school. Like, it's not that hard. My friends do it and they're still elite too. But in their states it's different, like the amount time you can miss and they're like well Simone like they won't let you do that here you know I said this is where that fork meets the road and you need to make a decision it was pretty hard but then again a lot of the girls at camp had um, they had picked homeschooling too so I didn't think it was that big of a deal that I didn't get to go to high school because I'm like well if these girls are homeschooled too then maybe it's not that big of a deal we started off with my husband doing the homeschooling and that was a disaster. And so quickly, I realized I have to find a teacher <laughs> because someone was gonna die. And it, might, it just might be Simone. Cat, cat. E, or D, sorry. Die hard. E. E? Echo. Elmo. Echo. Harry. Harry. Indian. 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 Insurgent. Oh. J. Jack and a half. <laughs> 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 yeah, let me see what movie you Jack Wire. Jack A. Jumanji. Jack A. Let's jump Okay. Kill Hands off your legs. Kill no, that's Bill. two kill Monkey. Kill L. <laughs> Hands off your legs. Butt down King. lower page. Lion King. Yeah. Lion King. M. Monsters Inc. Mockingjay. So move your feet. Yeah. In. Narnia. 
2013 was when she was a senior and um, that was when things to me things just changed for Simone. I remember it was January and I sat with Simone so that she could write her goals. It's something that we do as a family. Um, I encourage all my children to write their goals for the year and she, and of course she sat there and wrote what her goals were for the year and I remember it was American Classic to get on the podium for American Classics, for Secret Classics and for P&G and um, those were her short-term goals and then as a long-term goal on a piece of paper she wrote that she wanted um, to, I mean, she just wrote a world championship. Me and my coaches had talked about worlds a little bit, but they're like, Simone, wouldn't it be cool if you actually got to go to worlds? And I'm like, yeah, it's never gonna happen, like whatever. It was just like always a thought, maybe alternate, or just hopefully getting to the world's camp, actually. There was no way in our wildest dream that Simone was gonna be selected. Never, never, never. It was just a goal. Going into 2013 PNGs, I didn't think I could win just because we had so many strong contenders. And that's what I told her, just go out there and be the best Simone. Just that year was so new for me with all the new experiences and competitions. And I just, I don't know, I don't think anyone would have ever thought of it. So Simone went into PNG Championships and won, and I think that gave her a lot of confidence. Um, but I also think she loves to perform, and so she was able to, you know, translate that then into international com competition, that success. And it just seemed like unreal at that point. I think Coach Amy cried, I think. I'm like, why is my, why is he crying? They're like, well, you just won. And I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Okay. Next. Um, ladies, I only seem to have four or five girls on the other tramp and like seven over here. Um, it would be nice if the tuck went up instead of to your butt. After double tuck, go open double. All right, your eyes open. Okay, the reason we're on trampoline is to help improve our air awareness, so use your eyes. Okay, now try to tighten up the flip a little bit. Making Worlds Team became more of a reality after PNGs, and then I guess that's when I thought, like, maybe I could make it as maybe an alternate, or just hopefully they need me for something, so. After PNGs, they always have, like, the national team meeting. They kind of tell you um, that everyone here, you know, is going to Worlds Camp. It was just a new experience for me, and going into it, I was just like, if I don't make this team, you know, it's just gained experience and nothing lost, and it'll all be for the better, you know? That's about it. <laughs> I knew Simone had done well throughout the year, but I still did not think that, I, I, did, I didn't think it was gonna happen. I was still surprised whenever I got named to the 2013 Worlds team, just cause all the girls were so good and I didn't think I ever had a chance. And then I was like, okay, well, just another experience, my first world, like. This was huge for us and very much unexpected. And, and when it actually happened, I remember us just scrambling around to get an airline ticket. I was very happy that my daughter was getting that opportunity to compete at a world's level. Going into 2013 Worlds, I was so nervous and I would even like shake and practice. You could see that how scared I was because I was always looking around and Everything, the scenery and the atmosphere was just so new to me. And Marta kept telling me, Simone, like, 
this is your first year Worlds. This is pretty much your first year on an international stage. Like, you have everything to gain here and nothing to lose. So just go out there and do what you can do. Like, don't be afraid out there. Like, this is you making your name. And so I was like, oh, okay, that makes a little bit more sense. In 2013, Kyla Ross was definitely the favorite going in. She was the youngest in the London Olympics, and then going into this next year, it was like this is her time as the youngest to kind of claim the throne. Um, and she also always was one of the, had some of the best execution, was one of the most consistent gymnasts in the United States. So I think a lot of people thought that for sure this was Kyla's time. Kyla had experience. Simone looked up to Kyla. That was her mentor, still is her mentor. And I remember they're good friends, but still fierce competitors. And Simone is a competitor. And it was just really exciting to have Kyla as my, my guide um, throughout the whole year, actually. So I really looked up to Kyla, and I just like wanted to be just like her so much. Um, and so all around final was really fun just because she was always there to calm me down and to just to keep me calm, I guess. I remember the last, the last event was the floor. And then my husband, he told me what she needed to win. And deep down, I'm hoping that that would happen. Oh, nobody had her at the front to win Worlds. You know, that was back on the Russians with Kamova and Mustafina. Nobody expected anything like that from an American. I don't even remember. I was just like in such shock and I was just really excited about my floor routine that I had just done. After my floor routine, I, I knew I had like done a good set for me, but I really didn't even think I'd be on the podium just because it was my first year Worlds and I wasn't expecting too much from myself. I just wanted to go out there and hit the best sets as I could, and which I did. And um, I don't know, I think I was just standing on the side and you could see it like above. Everyone was just like screaming and chanting and then they showed like my parents crying. Oh my gosh, I just lost it. I just cried and cried. And then they're like, Simone, you won Worlds? And I was just like, no, like is this for real? Like I just won Worlds? Everything just happened so fast that I didn't even believe it. And they were pushing us to awards as fast as possible. And like it still didn't even hit me whenever I was standing up on the podium. I was just like, like, well, this is crazy, so I was just really excited. I was really surprised that I had won um, over Kyla, but it was still really amazing that she came in second and that I got to stand on the podium with her. So it was amazing to have her next to me and just so exciting that we both came up on top. And I think that the thing that really stood out about Simone uh, being at that competition was that she was exactly the same Simone she had been since you know she was a junior. She was the same person with the same enthusiasm and she'd make it through her first year as a senior with um, the same kind of sparkle and passion and love for gymnastics and she really changed the whole competition floor. It was like everywhere that she went it was like smiles and light and happiness and love. And um, I think that that was made her performance even more special and made uh, her win that much more special is because she, I, you know, I said back then that she brought NCAA gymnastics to elite gymnastics. Simone brought this sense of team no matter where she went and a sense of like community wherever she was. And um, I think it added something that much more special to her win that year. She never put the pressure on that I have to beat a certain kid. It was what could she do to beat herself? It had been quite a journey up until this point. That one competition gave her the confidence to make her realize that her skills are really good and that she could measure up to the best in the world. So um, that gave her the confidence that she needed. It was a big turning point in my mentality, I guess, just because I never really believed I had it in me throughout that whole entire year.
Everything kept just taking me by surprise the whole entire year. And it was just really exciting and I was just, I don't know, I was shocked by myself and how what I did. And so I was like, okay, well, if everyone believes in me, all I need to do is believe in myself and then the outcomes will happen. It can't be understated how much anticipation there is. She goes, remember when we wouldn't even talk about that old word? You have that window of opportunity and it's so short that I knew I had to make a decision. 